Hello everybody, it is, you know, Tasha on Tuesdays and welcome to Choose You, the Mrs. Globe powered IGTV show that will inspire you to your life's crescendo. Again, um, I am Tasha Haskins, Mrs. Curvey Globe 2020. Hello everybody, I know people are getting logged in here. All right, and we have an amazing, amazing, amazing um, guest today. He is powerful beyond his years, uh, everything from, you know, being a pastor and an entrepreneur and a, a human rights advocate. So I'm very excited to have our guest. But again, um, I, I am Tasha Haskins, Mrs. Curvey Globe 2020 and the author of Choose You, Change Your Path and Walk in Your Purpose. Um, this is the Tuesday Choose You IG TV show. So I'm very, very excited um, for our guest today. His name is C. Ivan Johnson, based in the Seattle Tacoma area of Washington State. Very excited. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that he is on um, because this is going to be an amazing interview. Um, oh, there he is. I see he just popped on. So again, I'm very, very excited. Thank you guys for joining us today of whether you're going to be watching live or watching it a little bit later. Again, you know, Choose You is that, that, that show that's supposed to inspire you to your life's crescendo. I have to do my sponsor shout outs here. So I am actually all British Virgin Islands today. So first, of course, my makeup is done by Queens Allure. But Vanessa Williams, Queens of Lore, she is amazing. Um, not Vanessa Williams, oh my gosh. But um, <laughs> she's outstanding and she makes sure that my face looks good every single time I come on the show. I also have a little paparazzi jewelry here from Monique Bruner out in Oklahoma. And then lastly, I am wearing um, Beauty by Jazzine. This is out of the British Virgin Islands. So my earrings and my jumpsuit is from Beauty by Jasmine. So I'm very excited about that. So thank you guys so much for just sponsoring me and making sure that I look great every single Tuesday. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and let um, Ivan in on the call. Again, for those of you guys, um, whether you're gonna be watching now or you're gonna watch later, you're gonna be, um, I promise you, like your life is probably going to be very much different and changed by hearing this interview. So I'm going to let you in, Mr. Ivan here, so that we can get started. I think he's going to pop on here shortly. Oh, there he is. Hello there. Hello. How are you? I'm great. It's so good to see you. Oh, my gosh. You look great. You look revived. You just look, I and mean, I know you've been doing a lot of traveling, which is amazing for us to do, especially this day and time. So you look great. Good to see you. You look amazing as well, and it's good to see you. And thank you so much for having me on today to talk to you and to your constituents definitely looking forward to some time of inspiration and hopefully empowerment. Yes, yes. And we're we're hoping to get inspired by you, empowered by you. I mean, that's what this whole show is about is again it's, is, you know, when you think of the term choose you, right? You think, oh, that's selfish or whatever. No, because choosing you could be choosing your relationship with God. It could be choosing your, your purpose, your passion, the things that you love and you care about, um, and also choosing yourself as far as the healing and making sure that you are a whole person from the inside out. So I'm very, very excited to be hearing this from Mr. C. Ivan Johnson. You guys, just a little bit of background I've known. I met him in 2009, actually at a concert where um, gospel artist Kim Burrell was doing a concert and um, they were honoring my father. He had passed away that year and, and that's how I first came face to face with this amazing, powerful entrepreneur and man of God as well. So I would love first for you to share with our viewers just a little bit about your testimony. I mean, um, like I said, people, they see our glory, right? But they don't know our story. So I would love to hear a little bit about what your testimony is and how you came to be where you are today. Wow. Well, first of all, thank you again, <laughs> Tasha, for having me. And um, I appreciate that question. Um, I, first of all, just want to acknowledge the fact that um, where I am today is only by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. If I am anywhere, um, the Bible talks about, you know, thinking of ourselves more highly than we ought to. And I certainly mm -hmm. um, have not ascertained all that I desire to in life, but where I am now and what I have had the opportunity to achieve is certainly by the grace of God. You know, growing up, and that's why I love what you do and all of the pageants that I've been a part of, you've allowed me to be a judge and just the aspect of empowerment, the aspect of really honing in on 
um, self-esteem and just elevating that confidence. Um, I grew up as a very broken, very rejected, mm -hmm. very just, I didn't think much of myself at all. Um, mm -hmm. I would look at other kids my age and they would have a mother and a father. My parents were not together. Uh, they would just seem to have just this perfect TV uh, Cosby mm -hmm. show life that I desired myself. And so for years, because of such, I grew up feeling very inadequate. I felt mm -hmm. very unworthy. I felt as if I had no value, um, that I had nothing to offer because I did not have what other people had. And so, you know, what you don't deal with in your adolescence, it begins to manifest in your adulthood. And so it really was not, just to be honest with you, until I was in my early 20s when um, essentially when you and I encountered each other, when I was really honing in on what I recognized to be my purpose in the earth realm, which was to bring people together, whether it had been through concerts or conferences that I hosted or community events, um, once I started to really recognize that I had purpose and that yeah. I had value, good, good, and my good. value um, went far beyond what I didn't have, but God used those areas of deficit to yeah. help me and to yeah. cause me to be able to yeah. be a blessing to other people. And so when I reflect back on just growing up with that whole thought process of not being enough and, and you know, not being like other people and I'm tall, I'm skinny, I have uh, mm -hmm. very poor eyesight. So I used to wear very, very thick glasses as a child. Mm -hmm. So just all of those different elements, um, yeah. you know, what the enemy intended to use to yep. hold me down and to suffocate me in low self-esteem, God turned it around and used it for good. And yes. I'm, I'm so blessed to be able to be a blessing to other people. Well, I, I mean, listening to that and, and of course seeing you now, it's incredibly shocking. I think a lot of people have a uh, misperception of what the process can look like. And, and, and I think the biggest testimony, right, is as I say, you don't look like what you've been through. <laughs> and that's how you know it's God, right? He likes to make sure that we all, we can't give glory to anybody else. Like this is literally was just God. And, and, um, you know, I, I, it, it, it breaks my heart to hear it just because I was very similar. Though I had a very loving father, and but after being violated at a young age, I began to call into question everything that I was. Right, like I was just like, oh my god, I'm I'm too tall, I'm too black, I'm this, I'm that, you know. And and you just almost like you, I began to really not love myself, not like myself. So hearing that um, from you is very powerful because you are such a confident, handsome man and no one would even expect that, right? They'd be like, wait, what? You what? <laughs> you know, and that's just how how good he is. So so I wanted to ask you, now you've been kind of like a more what I would call like a freelance minister, right? Like, you know, maybe um I can't think of the right term right now, but you know, you've spoken to different churches, different events, and now you I mean, have your own congregation, your own church. Um that takes a lot to do. I, oof, I don't know how you do it, but so share with me, like, how did, why did you decide to say, Hey, I'm going to kind of step out of the field, if you will. And, and, and have my actual own church. Like, what was it that kind of drove you to doing that? And um, what is your vision for your congregation and for people that are a part of greater destiny? Wow. Well, thank you so much for asking that question. Number one, I have to say, Tasha, I did not choose this life. <laughs> before I was preparing to pastor a church, I was in much communic uh, much um, contemplation, rather, mm -hmm. about moving to Houston, Texas. Mm -hmm. um, and so I had talked about that for a long time. And then the Lord began to press upon me to establish a ministry. And I'm like, okay, you know, I can do an outreach ministry. And the Lord was like, no, this no. is... I said, whoa, okay, well, hold on. Let, me, let me back this on up. And so uh, I took time to really pray and to fast. And I went to my pastor, uh, the late Bishop Leo C. Brown Jr., mm -hmm. God bless yeah. him, and uh, went to him and we had a conversation. And he said it was confirmed in his spirit that, you know, I would pastor a church and that I would be successful and so that he could bless me and send me out to pastor a church. Wow. And so I went and started doing my research and looking for facilities. And it was just like everything, Tasha, just lined up mm, I, from the yeah. building. We purchased our building within the first year of being in ministry. Um, you know, various 
partnerships in our community, you know, we those came together and were able to provide us with funds and salaries for different people in our church. And so the Lord just allowed things to just come together and it was undeniable that it was him. It has not been without any kind of struggle. It has not been without mm -hmm. any kind of conflict, if you will, just because, you know, whenever you're doing something for the Lord, the enemy does all that he can do to frustrate yep. the <laughs> purposes of God. Yeah. And so I'm yeah. not going to act like it's been a bed of roses. I'm not right. going to act as if I have not wanted to quit and move to Houston and say to the congregation, listen, <laughs> listen <laughs> <I'm> Pastor, <laughs> I'll see y'all some other time, you know, hit me. <laughs> right, right, right. But the Lord has given me the fortitude to remain steadfast and immovable mm, and always abounding okay. in his work. And so as time would progress, I would learn that when you pastor, you're not just pastoring your local church, if you will, within the brick and the mortar, but you pastor your community. And as I begin to look out on some of the areas of the body of Christ where there is much um, yeah. There's such a lack of love and a lack of yeah. grace yeah. And, yeah. Mercy, um, and, and, and just really truth, you know, bringing people into the truth of knowing that Jesus Christ loves you no matter where you come from. He's here to save you. He's here to transform your life. He's here to show you what love truly is all about. He wants to live in you. He wants to dwell in you. He wants to lead I you, love it. Guide you. And then the Lord began to just give me this um, broader perspective of even our community how mm. there's such a um, a need for leadership and mm. I say Christian leadership, yeah. you know, because the scripture tells us in Micah, I'm not trying to be churchy, but just want to bring this together. Micah no, no, listen, it's a part of your life. I ask <laughs> okay. you, but go for it. Please do. Please but do. Micah, Micah 6 and 8 talks about uh, the Lord speaks to the prophet. And he says, I have shown you, or O mortal, what I require of you. Mm. And that is to... Uh, love mercy and to do justly and to walk humbly with your God. And so looking at the requirements that the Lord has given unto us as his people, as ministers, mm -hmm. it really began to cause me to um, stretch out beyond the yeah. four walls of the church. And so um, as a result of such, um, we feed and we clothe and we do all kinds of, you know, um, amazing things in the community. Um, and our tagline is transforming lives through purposeful ministry. Led by love. I love that. You know, I'm sorry, really quickly, Ivan, I want to, you know, I think um, oftentimes, like you said, people put ministry in a box. I used to always say that um, pageantry was the microphone in my ministry because it opens up doors for me to be able to talk to people that I otherwise wouldn't have. I mean, in general, like the beauty industry, I've been a model, you know, a professional model since 2006. And so, you know, people are hurting in the entertainment industry. They are hurting. And so for me, I, I love what you said, because it's kind of funny because you weren't like in a box. And now you're like, you actually have your own congregation. And I'm like reverse. I literally was like, okay, God, I'm not, I don't want to be a a pastor. I don't want to be, you know, a pastor's wife. Like I want to, because, you know, you think about, you know, how he lived his life. He was like, look, I, I'm going to flip tables and everything else when I'm in a church, but if I'd rather talk at a well with a whore, right, who's real about her stuff, you know, and, and so what I love is that you've had just so many years of being out amongst people, which you're able to bring a different dynamic to what church is and I think a lot of people, you know, they have a stereotype of what it is, but you know, because you've been out there in the highways and byways and all of that, you know, you can bring that mindset to your actual church that you're creating. And then of course building leaders and disciples under you who have that same mindset. So I just, you know, I think that that's so, so powerful and so, so needed. Um, so, so needed. And I think that's a really great segue. Um, you know, you've been in the spotlight a lot. You're in the spotlight, you're one of those you know, a young man, you know, and, and, and you've been recognized and whether it's been awards and, and speaking and all these different things. I know that with that attention comes a bullseye on our back. Okay. <laughs> and people, you know, unfortunately, whether it's jealousy or envy or whatever. So how do you um, deal with that? Like, of course, I know you, you speak to God and I, I get that, but like, what are the practical things that Ivan does? I'm sorry. I mean, I don't want you know, hear people come for me. I'm sorry, pastor or see Ivan Johnson. I'm just kidding. But, um, you know, what do you do to kind of weather that? Um, because I know with what you've done and who God elevated you to be, a lot of stuff, negative things come with that because of human. How do you um, handle that in a practical way? I think a lot of people benefit from hearing that. Wow. Well, uh, you're absolutely correct. You know, leadership comes with scrutiny. 
and yeah. <laughs> it comes with great criticism. But one of the things that I have learned as a leader and as I strive to fulfill my purpose is focus is so key. Um, mm. You know, you have to start seeing things for what they are. And a distraction is simply a distraction. It's simply a distraction. And so distractions yeah. are designed to cause you to be derailed. They're designed to cause accidents, if you will, and collisions. Mm. It's like when you're driving a car, if you take your eyes off the road for too long, either you're going to get hurt or someone yep. around you is going to get hurt or you'll also endanger the people that are in the car with you as well. Yeah. And so I have learned you know, to remain focused mm. and to see things for what they really are and to recognize the distractions and not allow them to um, derail me, not allow them to um, cause me to put other people's lives in danger. Mm. Um, as we know in the scripture, uh, Jesus told Peter, he said, come. He just said, come. That's all he said was come. Yeah. And Peter started walking on water, didn't even realize it, but it wasn't until he was like, wait a minute, what, what is going on here? <laughs> right, and right. He began to sing. Started to think, he yeah. Mm -hmm. Distracted by what he already had the ability to do. He became mm. distracted by what seemed as though it was an impossibility when God Jesus said, listen, come, he made it possible. And so you have to focus on, um, you know, where God is leading you, what God has spoken to you, focus on the possibilities and not the impossibilities. Mm -hmm. um, you know, look to the hills, keep your, 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 your focus forward. And, um, you know, whatever is back there, whatever is behind you, it, it's back there for a reason, because what is for you is ahead of you. That is so good. I, I, I like, that's like a big takeaway for me, right? Is my dad used to always say, keep the main thing, the main thing, <laughs> you know? And I think that that is something very similar to what you're saying. Um, and oftentimes in this journey, whether it's uh, your healing journey or, or understanding your purpose, you're right. We look to the left, we look to the right. And, and it's like, no, like, Keep the main thing the main thing. Like the, the, the even the word says, you know, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, right? So we're keeping our eyes on that, you know, the prize, which is obviously what God has, you know, called us to do. And and so now I want to ask you, um, you know, you shared with me a lot of the things and challenges you went through, especially in your in your youth. Although you're still young, but you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> you, still, you look exactly the same. Like Thank in the last eleven years, you look exactly. The same. Oh, praise God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, um, but I wanted to ask, you know, there's going to be, there's someone that's going to be watching, whether it's today or the next day, and they're like at a crossroads in their life, right? Where they're like, okay, do I continue the path of pain and, and all these things? Or do I decide to, you know, choose me? And, and, and what people don't understand is like, again, you know, choosing me, right? It, it's choosing that relationship with the divine. It, it's saying, okay, God, not, not my will, but your will be done, right? You know, and, and choosing that so that we can actually be our authentic self, the person that he made us like before we ever thought of in our, in our mother's womb. So what would you share with that person that's at that crossroads that's trying to decide, I'm going to stick with famili familiarity. I'm going to stay, you know, this, when they could be choosing the path, of, the path of themselves and the path of, of the inner relationship with the divine, what would you share with them? So a crosswalk is intended for you to cross over. Mm. And so if there's a crosswalk in between where you are now and where you're supposed to be, mm. you gotta take the crosswalk. Um, and being that we are not by ourselves, you know, Jesus is our crosswalk guard and whatever traffic he has to stop, um, whoever he has to tell to slow down to protect you as you're crossing the crosswalk, he's going to do that for you. And yes. so what I would say is that the crosswalk is there. The crossroad is there for you to simply cross over. Don't sit there and stand, stare at it too long because the longer you sit there and look at it or stand there and look at it, um, and I say sit or stand because there are individuals who um, have special needs and handicaps. And so even with what you feel has impaired you, it's still designed for you to cross over. <laughs> and you got to okay. make up in your mind by any means that if, if somebody's got to wheel me over, if somebody's got to push me over, if I got to walk over, if I've got to hobble over there, I'm going to cross 
this yeah. crossroad. I'm going to cross this crosswalk because it's designed for me to cross over in, and I yeah. have protection. I have what I need in order to get to the other side. And so that that is what I would definitely say. Wow, that is so, I didn't look, wow, okay. You might, might have given me a little wisdom there, young man. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit, just a little bit. Um, now, you know, how do you feel? I'm curious because one thing about, uh, uh, I guess, whether it's religion or the church community, is they have this kind of like pray your way through it type mindset. And, but I do believe just like God created pastors and he created all these other, he created physicians, he created therapists, he created counselors. So you being a pastor, what are, what are your thoughts on um, actual act, going through therapy and actually doing the work that you need to do to really heal? Because me personally, you know, I've tried to pray away a lot of things. <laughs> and, but just like I, I talked about this actually in my book, where just like how we have a physical injury, we'll go to the doctor, we'll get an x ray, we'll do all these things to make sure that we're back in the game of life and get healed and get our calf. But when it comes to matters of the heart and mind, all of a sudden we want to make it extra over spiritualized or we want to be like, oh, you're going to be fine and, you know, suck it up. And it's like, wait a minute, like, why would I not go through a similar process? for my own mental and spiritual healing. So what are your thoughts as a minister about actual real therapy and, and counseling and, and even, even if you need maybe medication periodically to, to deal with your the highs and lows, how do you feel about that? So I feel that, um, number one, I have faith in God, but I believe in science. Mm, okay, so I love that. Aspects of science that speak to the psychological makeup, the sociological makeup, and also the physiological makeup. And yes. so with that being said, um, if there are times when, you know, what your need is, um, it, it supersedes just a conversation with your pastor. So for me, right. you know, I counsel many people yeah. and I will do two sessions. And if I feel that it is something that requires more in depth or medical attention, I refer out. That's good. And That's I so good. That is a good protective measure for myself. It's yeah. A protective measure for a parishioner that I'm meeting with. And it also is a level of care. Yes. So I, I believe in counseling. I believe in therapy. I do believe that in all things, Matthew 6 and 33, we seek you first the kingdom and all yes. righteousness and all these things are added unto us. And so even as I'm in my therapy sessions, or even if you're in uh, physical therapy. Um, I, I've met people who, um, you know, were diagnosed with diabetes. And as a result of such, they didn't like the process. So they said, well, I'm not going to do this, or I'm not going to follow the doctor's orders, which is a personal choice. Um, however, you can yet pray and yet yes. have faith. And as you're going through the process of, of waiting to be supernaturally healed, you know, you're yes. receiving whatever natural um, yes. uh, um, medicines or, or natural assistance that God yes. has put here in the earth because yes. everything that is good and perfect comes from God. Yes. And so he gives doctors and therapists and um, uh, physical therapists as well the intelligentsia to be able to serve and to be able to help us to get to that place of healing and wholeness and wellness. Okay. And, and I think that we always pray first. We always keep God first. Yeah, we always yeah. stay in his face. We always, you know, uh, wait for him to give us the counsel and the guidance and to release that wisdom that we need. Um, and along with that, he will do his part, but we have to do our part. There's nothing yes. wrong with going yes. to counseling. There are some- Oh, say it again. That's so good. One, hearing it from a black man, because you know, in, in our, in our, the black community, um, getting therapy and stuff is kind of taboo. Like we don't talk about it. That makes us, you know, whatever. And it's like, no, um, all, especially the systematic things, right. That have evolved throughout us in America as black people. Um, you know, it's like, Oh, just suck it up. Right. Take a look in and keep on ticking. No, because I think about the years I operated in brokenness because I was not properly, I didn't go through the process of healing that needed to happen. And yes, God combines his super to our natural, right? You know, face without works is dead. And choosing me, me saying three years ago, Tasha, you know what? 
we're going to stop all the extra, all the fluff, whatever. And you, I got to go through this process so that I can actually walk my purpose. I don't have to have a metaphorical limp because I didn't want to do things, you know, I'm just going to, I'm just going to pray. No, because sometimes God's will is like, hey, so I created these people too, go see them. <laughs> like, and I think the other element of it as well, in conjunction with what you're saying, I completely agree. Um, you know, I think something else that we must consider is many times what people are holding in and, and um, what people don't release because they're afraid to talk to a family member or a friend or a pastor mm -hmm. because they feel like they'll be judged. Going yep. to a therapist, going to a counselor, and just simply being able to release. I have yes. referred people to counseling and to therapy. Um, and people have, you know, there are differences. We don't need to get into all that, but sometimes there are differences between a therapist and a counselor. Just right, 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 right. The type right. of um, need that you have and, and with the mental strain that you're dealing with. But where people have only gone to like one or two sessions and they walked out feeling much better because they were like, I guess I just needed to be able to release it. And it's not yep. that as a friend, because sometimes we can become self-centered. Well, why didn't you talk to me about it? Well, I mean, sometimes we're not always <laughs> comfortable. Well, you could yeah, yeah. Sometimes you don't want to tell your pastor certain things. And you don't want to tell yeah. you know, your friends certain things. And so it, it's really okay. You can go to a total, complete stranger who has your confidentiality at heart, and you can just release and pour yeah. out. You can go back as many years as possible, and they won't tell you. You should be over that by now. Right. And you can just That's release so good. and just talk about it. And, and it will bring so much healing and yes. wellness to your body because you're not holding in that anxiety yep. and that animosity and that anger yep. and that bitterness and all of those things. And so then you do your part and then God does the rest, okay? Now that you've emptied yourself out, now are you ready for me to pour right. into <laughs> you so that you can minister, yes. so that you can be an entrepreneur, so that you can be yes. an actor, so that you can be a fashion queen and a, like Tasha here, you can be a supermodel <laughs> but do it from a healthy place. Yes, yes. Oh. To, to, to be and to exist, but you're not really healthy on the inside. Wow. Oh, that is so good. And I love, you know, hearing that from a pastor, because, you know, and, and, and again, as a black man as well. I mean, that's just so very powerful to hear that. And, you know, to anyone that is, you know, watching, yes, of course, you know, like, I mean, even the word says, right, one plants a seed, another man waters, right, one gets the increase, right? So, you know, just like that whole principle of actual, real, true, divine healing is a God thing, right? That's actually like, that's a thing, you know, with him. And so I love hearing that from you. You know, as we're getting ready to close, Ivan, again, I, I can't explain. Thank you for taking the time this morning to be on the show. And there's going to be so many lives that are that I'm sure are being changed now, but will be in the future viewings as well. Um, how can people plug in? So not just in Washington State, but how can they plug in? How can they, um, I didn't get around to asking about the Servant's Journal, but I, I know that you have a very powerful uh, literary work out there. So if you want to talk about that briefly, how can people order that book? How can they follow you? I don't know if you guys are doing virtual services, but that people that just want to be able to tap into what you're doing. Well, first of all, I want to say, Tasha, thank you so much for inviting me to be on with you and to share this platform with you. Mm -hmm. I'm very humbled and very honored and so proud of the work that you are doing, that you have done. Your middle name should be Resilience. I have watched mm -hmm. you through the years, and you have been so resilient through the ups, through the downs, the deaths, um, and just so many obstacles that you have encountered in life. You have been so resilient resilient mm -hmm. and you have always bounced back and so i pray that when people see you and beyond just all of the glorious beauty that you possess that they would recognize that this is a woman who exemplifies and personifies mm -hmm. resilience and if she can make it if she can take it and if she can bounce back from anything i can do the same yes um, yes, yes. Me on instagram and twitter and facebook at c ivan johnson the name of our church is Greater Destiny Church Tacoma on Facebook, and we have, uh, we're have we in virtual services right now. And so if you want to come on and follow us, please feel free to do so and join us on Sunday mornings and Wednesdays. And um, I wrote a book back in 2012, I believe it was, <laughs> called A Servant's Journal, Encouraging Devotions and Exhortations. And if you just Google it, it's everywhere. I, <laughs> one place I saw 
They were selling it for a lot of money. I'm like, I need to get royalties off of that. There was another country. I'm like, how much, I'm is, that in, how much is that in American dollars? How much is that in American dollars? But you can Google it, and, and the book is available, and it's out. Um, I'm actually working on a second book, and I'll just give a little bit, if you don't mind. No, please, book, let's go. The title of the book is in, it's called Breathe. And mm. I received wow. that title as I considered this whole time of pandemic is centered around the respiratory system. And mm. as a result of the respiratory system being affected, it has caused people's mobility. It has caused people's agility. It has caused people's ability to come to a place of being encumbered and hindered. And so the book Breathe, um, it, it, it is centered around what are you doing with the breath that God gave you? Wow. Ooh, I can't wait. <laughs> what are you doing with the breath that God gave you? One of the first things that God did, he breathed breath yes, in the yes. nostrils of Adam. And so we recognize that it is in him that we live, move, and have our being, being, that we have yes. our existence. And so what are you doing with the life? What are you doing with the breath? What are you doing with the existence that he has privileged you to have in the earth realm? What excuses are you making? All right, beyond what excuses are you making? What has happened in your life that has caused you to lose your breath? What has taken your breath away? What has caused you to have panic attacks and Mm. metaphorically? What has caused you to have to be, some of you are on a spiritual ventilator right now because you're like, I can't even take anymore. I'm barely breathing. You know, the people that God has put in my life, they are like my uh, spiritual ventilators, you know, mm. you have, but the Lord wants to take you off the ventilator and he wants you to solely rely on the breath that he has mm. given and put inside of you. And so that's what the next book is going to be about. It's going to be called. Oh my God. You have me almost crying. I'm like, oh, like, so when is it supposed to come out? I'm like, oh my God. That's going to be so, oh, breathe. Oh, so good. So good. So good. So good. Gosh, we should do like book tours together or something because oh, this is going to be powerful. Um, wow. Well, Ivan, I'm going to, you know, we're ending now, but I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys saw, follow him on CI Ivan Johnson across all social media platforms um, as well as his actual church, which he's doing virtually. Um, I want to thank you, Ivan. I do not take it lightly that you took the time this morning to be on Choose You. Um, next Tuesday, of course, same time, we're having another amazing guest. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. And what I always say, I say it's never too late to choose you, change your path, and walk in your purpose. Thank you again, Mr. C. Ivan Johnson, and we'll see you guys next Tuesday. Bye-bye.